Coffee Break German Season 3, Episode 8. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Und ich bin Andrea. Wie geht's dir, Andrea? Mir geht es ganz toll. Danke. Und dir? Ja, mir geht's auch gut. Also, was machen wir heute? Heute lernen wir Konjunktionen. Ja, wir looken at a, a range of connectors. Uh, so, uh, items in a language that connect uh, two clauses. Okay, so can you give us an example of what this kind of thing would be in English so that we can match up to our understanding of German? Yes, uh, maybe one of the most well-known connectors is and mm -hmm. or but or um, so that, Yeah. although all these are connectors. So they're basically words that connect one part of a sentence to another. Now, as usual, we'll talk through this in, uh, in uh, the explanation of all of this in German, and then we're going to listen to a conversation which, by coincidence, happens to feature lots of these examples of the particular connectors that we're looking at today. How does that sound, Andrea? Ja, sehr gut. Natürlich ist das alles Zufall. It's pure coincidence. <laughs> Let's get started. Los geht's. Okay, Andrea, take it away. Explain to us what we're going to be learning. Yes, as I said before, we're looking at connectors today. Items of German that connect two phrases or two clauses. And we're going to start with damit. Have you heard of this word before? Damn it. Um, I think I've come across it, but I would not know how to use it, to be honest. Okay, so we're using it to express a planned consequence of something. Uh, I have an example for you. Mm -hmm. Philip packt zwei Brötchen, damit sein Freund auch eins haben kann. Okay, so Philip is packing two rolls, two bread rolls. Um, is it something like saying that way his friend can also have one? Genau, yeah. And Philip is doing this so that the consequence will be that his friend can have one. And that's damn it. Mm -hmm. So is it kind of like so that then? Yes, yes, that's good. Okay, yeah. so Philip packs two sandwiches so that his friend can have one too. Exactly, well done. I can give you another example if you like. Yeah, perfect. Silvia fährt zu ihrem Onkel, damit er Gesellschaft hat. Right, so there's a word in here I'm not familiar with. Gesellschaft. Company. Ah, okay, right. So, um, Silvia fährt zu ihrem Onkel. Um, she is traveling to see her uncle. She goes to see her uncle, damit er Gesellschaft hat, so that he has company so that he's not alone. Well done, Mark. That's excellent. Are you ready for the next connector? Why not? Okay. So, because we were looking at damit uh, earlier and you translated it very well with so that, this might come in as a bit tricky because our next connector is so das. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so, so does also translate as so that, but it could be a voluntary or an involuntary consequence. And I'm going to give you uh, an example. Charlotte hat alle Kirschen gegessen, so dass für ihren Bruder keine mehr übrig waren. And now we are going to find something out about Charlotte's character to see if this is voluntary or involuntary. Right, so I've understood parts of this. Um, Charlotte had a la Kirsche gegessen. She's eaten all the cherries? Yes. Okay, and then you said, so dass für ihren Bruder keine mehr übrig waren. What's übrig? Uh, there were none, none left. Ah, okay, so she ate all the cherries so that there weren't any left for her brother. Yes, but as I said, it could be voluntary or involuntary. It could be that she ate all the cherries because she liked them so much and maybe she just didn't think there were none left for her brother. 
-hmm. Or she ate all the cherries so that there were none left for her brother because she didn't want to share cherries for with her brother. Right. So I think in English, when we say so that, um, in that in that context, it really does mean that she is a little bit nasty and she ate them deliberately so that there weren't any left uh, for her brother. Okay. In the German, so does, this is not necessarily the case. It could be just that this was an unfortunate consequence of her eating all the cherries. Okay. Um, could we have another example, perhaps? Sure. Am Himmel sind keine Wolken, so dass man die Sterne und den Mond sehen kann. Uh, kannst du das wiederholen, bitte? Natürlich gern. Am Himmel sind keine Wolken, so dass man die Sterne und den Mond sehen kann. So, am Himmel, in the sky, sind keine Wolken. There aren't clouds. There aren't any clouds. Ja. So dass man die Sterne und den Mond sehen kann. Uh, so, that, so that one can see the, the stars and the moon. Ja. And um, here, the, the sky probably didn't do this on purpose, but it was just the meteorological um, circumstances that then uh, allowed us to see the stars and the moons because there is a cloud-free sky. Here we're using so das as an involuntary consequence. Okay, can I ask you a question? Is it possible, I'm, I'm trying to think of a, of, of a way in which the word order um, would be slightly different. Could we simply say, am Himmel sind keine Wolken, so man... Like, can we leave out the das? Nein. Nein, N nicht in einem Satz. Could we say, also? Um, yes, so am Himmel sind keine Wolken, also kann man die Sterne und den Mond sehen. But then that changes into a main clause. Right. But the meaning would be the same there. Yeah, genau. Okay, so I'm just trying to work out what's going on here um, and how best to, to work this in my head from an English point of view. Um, if we go back to Charlotte and the cherries, if we said Charlotte hat alle Kirschen gegessen, also... Uh, now a main clause. Waren... Uh, <laughs> this is too difficult now. <laughs> ja, waren keine mehr übrig für ihren Bruder. Oder waren für ihren Bruder keine mehr übrig. Right. So in that case, when we're using also, then it's it, it, there's less of a deliberate nature in in my head in, in the English translation of Charlotte yes. has eaten all the cherries so there are no more for, for her brother, rather than in deliberately so that there are no more for her brother. Yes, then it would be more maybe an error of judgment mm -hmm. or maybe a misunderstanding of some sort. Okay, okay. Yeah? Right, that makes sense so far. Okay, gut, dann ready for the next one. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to ohne zu. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we use ohne zu when we want to uh, try and, and avoid something. Okay. Yeah, so for example, ich kann das Brot nicht herausnehmen ohne mir die Finger zu verbrennen. So here we failed to avoid something, but we tried to so avoid something, but failed. Yeah? I'll say the sentence again. Ich kann das Brot nicht herausnehmen, so herausnehmen, to take out, out of the oven, okay? Ohne mir die Finger zu verbrennen. Okay, so ich kann das Brot nicht herausnehmen. I can't take the bread out of the oven, ohne mir die Finger zu verbrennen, without burning my fingers. Genau, ja. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sehr gut, ja. Yeah. So, we have to verbrennen, and we don't want to verbrennen, and that's why we say ohne zu, and then the verb verbrennen at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Let's, let's look at another example there. Yes, I have a second example for you. Ohne zu wissen, wer dort ist, geht Markus nicht an die Party. I'll repeat this. 
Ohne zu wissen, wer dort ist, geht Markus nicht an die Party. Okay, I think I'm getting this. So, ohne zu wissen, wer dort ist. Without knowing who is there, geht Markus nicht an die Party. Markus is not going to the party. Right, I think I'm getting this. Now, th this, I think I've worked out why there's a difference between this one and the first one, um, because this is um, without knowing who will be there, uh, Marcus is not going. So unless he knows who is there, he is not going to the party. That's right, yes. So unless is a good, is a good way to uh, translate this. Unless he knows who will be there, Marcus will not go to the party. Ohne zu wissen, wer dort ist, geht Marcus nicht an die Party. Can I ask you a question then? If we said, ohne zu wissen, wer dort ist, geht Marcus an die Party, can you see that first of all? Yes, uh, here the ohne zu wissen has a slightly different function. If we look at my uh, example that Marcus doesn't go to the party, ohne zu wissen, wer dort ist, then uh, knowing who is there is a prerequisite for him, for his going to the party. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we use your sentence, ohne zu wissen, wer dort ist, geht Marcus an die Party, then we're explaining that it doesn't really matter to Marcus who is at the party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So regardless of who is at the party, he will go. Yeah, so almost like even without knowing who's at the party, Marcus is going anyway. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is good. Yeah. So just to double check then, ohne zu is always going to be followed by the infinitive form of the verb. Ja, genau, das ist richtig. Okay. Genau. Okay, and then we have one last connector. Mm -hmm. And it's ohne das. And uh, I'll give you an example. And you might think, oh, this is very complicated. But then when we look at it, it won't be. Okay? Okay. Example number one. Karin isst die ganze Pizza, ohne dass danach Krümel rumliegen. Okay, so there's some vocabulary in here that I'm definitely not like familiar with, but I think I understand what's going on. I was, is Karen eating the whole pizza um, without uh, there being crumbs around afterwards? Genau, das ist richtig. Ja, yeah, well done. Ja, yeah, sehr gut. So there, ohne das. So why couldn't we use ohne zu there? Because Krümel and Karin are two different subjects. Right. So this is when we've got a change of subject. Then we need to use ohne das. Yes. Genau. Das ist richtig. Ja. Yeah? So okay. we have a change of subject. So we need a, a, a different subordinate clause. And we're using one with das. And while this example might have looked uh, on first glance quite complicated, it isn't because we know how to do das sentences, don't we, Mark? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So with a das sentence, we have the infinitive at the end. Okay. And this is exactly what is happening here. It's just that we have ohne in front of the das. Right. Okay. Yeah? So. So if I wanted, if I wanted crumbs to lie around. I would say, ich möchte, dass danach Krümel rumliegen. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, mm -hmm. and is it's the exactly the same structure. It's just that we use a ohne in front. Karin ist die ganze Pizza. Ohne, and then, dass danach Krümel rumliegen. Yep, yep, okay. So, can I ask you, if Karin were eating the whole pizza um, without feeling full, that would be an ohne zu. Genau. Karin isst die ganze Pizza, ohne satt zu sein. Ohne satt zu sein. Right, okay. She's still hungry. Yeah, so, um, but this one, because we, we change the subject, ohne das. Can we hear another example, please? Yes, of course. Könnt ihr euch unterhalten, ohne dass das ganze Restaurant mithören muss? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if this is happening in the same pizza restaurant, I don't know whether they're talking about the crumbs or the lack thereof. Um, so can you say that one more time? Könnt ihr euch unterhalten, ohne dass das ganze Restaurant mithören muss? So sich unterhalten is to have a conversation with someone, yeah? 
Genau. So, ja. könnt ihr, can you have a conversation together, ohne dass das ganze Restaurant mithören muss, um, without the whole restaurant uh, listening in or having to, to listen to us? Yeah, having to listen because we have muss at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so yeah. the muss there, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. right. Genau, das ist richtig. Okay, so we've gone through four different types of connectors. We've had ohne das, ohne zu, and then so das and damit, yeah? Genau, das ist richtig. And after the break, we're going to be hearing some of these in our dialogue. So, bis bald. In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break German Season 3, we're also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your German. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode where Andrea will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the topic of each lesson. And of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakgerman.com and follow the links for Season 3 there. Okay, welcome back. We are looking at connectors today and we've got a conversation for you. Andrea, can you explain what's happening in the conversation, please? Yes, so we're looking at a pyjama party. Do you know what a pyjama party is? Uh, do you mean, do I know how to say that in German or do you know what it, do I know what it is? Oh, is it the same word in yes, English? Yes, we can say pyjama oh. party in English. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> That's my okay. ignorance. I thought that was one of these Dinglish <laughs> words yeah. where we think it's English, but it is uh, just German, like smoking, for example. Yeah. <laughs> you know what a smoking is, yeah? Is that the, the jacket? A dinner jacket. A dinner jacket, yeah. Yes. Okay. So anyway, so pyjama party. Yeah, that's what we say. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's between, uh, we, we're going to listen to a conversation between Daniela and her mother. And Daniela is organizing a pyjama party. And her mother has some uh, ground rules for her. Okay. Okay. And uh, I think uh, um, some parents who are listening might uh, recognize this conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we will obviously see some of these connectors. Okay. So listen out for damit, uh, so das, ohne zu and ohne das as we listen to this conversation. Mama, du weißt, dass ich heute Tina und Melanie eingeladen habe. Nur damit du dich nicht wunderst, wenn sie in einer Stunde hier sind. Ja, klar weiß ich das. Es verging ja kein Tag, ohne dass du mich daran erinnert hast. Außerdem hatte ich ein langes Gespräch mit Tinas und Melanies Eltern, damit wir uns einig sind, wie die Pyjama-Party heute abläuft. Was soll das heißen? Wir können doch sicher machen, was wir wollen, ohne Stress zu bekommen. Das kommt ganz darauf an, was ihr vorhabt. Zuerst wollten wir uns mal ein paar Snacks vorbereiten. So eine Art Häppchen mit Chips, Sandwiches, Süßigkeiten und natürlich Smoothies. Also wenn ihr das könnt, ohne dass danach die Küche aussieht wie bei Hempels unterm Sofa, dürft ihr das gern. Aber erst will ich, dass ihr was Vernünftiges esst, ohne zu meckern. Ich habe Salat und Ravioli für euch gemacht. Ja, okay. Aber schnell, so dass wir dann unsere Snacks machen können, damit wir während des Films etwas zu essen haben. Klar. Wann beginnt der Film? Um 20 Uhr, aber die Snacks müssen um 19.30 Uhr fertig sein, damit wir uns noch etwas schick machen können. Schick für eine Pyjama-Party? Seid ihr dann nicht im Pyjama? Ja, Mama, heute kann man keine Pyjama-Party feiern, ohne gut auszusehen. Hm, seltsam. Ich dachte, man macht Pyjama-Partys, damit man sich nicht schick machen muss. Mama, du verstehst aber auch gar nichts. <lacht> <laughs> okay, so, uh, some interesting things going on in there. Um, would you like to explain what's going on, uh, Andrea? Well, we will, of course, go through this in, in detail in our language study episode. And of course, you can listen back if you'd like to hear that one more time. But Andrea, can you give us a, a summary of what's going on here? 
Ja, natürlich. So, Daniela is having a sleepover or a slumber party and she reminds her mom that her two friends, Tina and Melanie, will be there soon. Mm -hmm. Her mom says that she hasn't forgotten, also because Daniela has told her every day about this. And she mentions a conversation with both Tina's and Melanie's parents to decide on what will be allowed during the slumber party. Daniela is a little bit confused because she thought they could do what they wanted without getting into trouble. Okay, so what about the, the food that they're going to be having at the party? Because I think there's a little bit of disagreement. Yes, they want to prepare snacks, including smoothies. Uh, and mom agrees if afterwards the kitchen isn't too messy. But she also insists that they eat a ravioli first because she had prepared some ravioli for them. Exactly. And they have to eat it before eating snacks. And then there's also some um, time considerations that <laughs> Daniela is, is insisting on. <laughs> yes, yes. There the mother is quite confused, actually, because Daniela points out that they would have to hurry up so that they could prepare snacks and then also do themselves up a bit before yeah. the film starts. And for mom, this is very, very confusing because she thought they would just be in their pyjamas. But Daniela explains that nowadays you can't have a slumber party without also looking good. Ausgezeichnet, okay. Um, my days of slumber parties are well <laughs> long gone. But um, I, I think that uh, obviously there's some, some very interesting connectors in there. Um, and we will, as I said, of course, go through them in our bonus episode. Also, das reicht für heute. Ein Moment noch, Mark. Es fehlt noch etwas. You've forgotten something. Because it's time for noch eine Kleinigkeit. Okay, Andrea, what do we have today? So I have a word that I use very often and it is uh, ein Partylöwe sein. Um, <laughs> and that means to be a party animal. And I'm using it often because I am not a party Löwe at all. <laughs> du bist kein Party Löwe. <laughs> Nein, ich bin ein Party Muffel. Party Muffel, okay. Ja, ein, yeah, so if you're a Muffel of something, then you, you're not, that's not your thing. Yeah. That's not your thing. Okay. So, uh, but uh, obviously I have friends who are Party Löwen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, so then I do also attend occasionally a party. Okay, so we, we've got party animal in English, but in, in German you're a party lion specifically, very specifically. Genau, yeah, genau. And what's the translation of Muffel? Uh, a Muffel would maybe be a party pooper. Party pooper, okay, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I'm party Muffel. Okay, yeah. good, excellent. Well, we will leave it there for today for this episode of Coffee Break German. We hope you've enjoyed it. As I said, we'll be going through everything in our bonus episode and there's also our translation challenges. And all of these are part of our Coffee Break German course, which you can find over on the Coffee Break Academy at coffeebreakacademy.com. Also, vielen Dank, Andrea. Danke, Mark. Uh, und bis bald. Bis zum nächsten Mal. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved.